Hi everyone. Today I'm going to answer an important question that many, many people are struggling with. When should I leave my relationship? Even though I'm a proponent of relationships, um, uh, I'm not a proponent of saving a relationship by losing an individual that's in it because it is really just a fake save. And it's like, um, you know, putting a bandaid on a water main break because it's, um, it's bound to break anyway. Um, so I'm going to answer it in four uh, different steps, each one or four parts. Each part is real important. And um, so please do listen to the end. And the third and the fourth are action steps. So a short note for uh, physical abuse, regardless of gender or severity of um, abuse, like, oh, I'm just being pushed and shoved or, you know, it's not, I'm not getting beaten. I'm not getting bruised. Bruised. If you see physical abuse in your relationship, understand that it's not that your partner is bad, they're just sick. But they do get sicker the longer you stay. And when you stay, you're giving them the impression that it's okay with you, what they're doing. The, the scariest part of this is that the longer you stay, the somehow, you, you know, you start, not somehow, but you do start to become, um, I want to use the word codependent, but forget about the labels here and what i want you to know is that it just becomes harder to leave that that is the scariest part because when you start to lose your own agency in, in leaving that's difficult the second part of uh, that i want to mention uh, to this response is that it's a simple answer when should i leave my relationship leave your relationship when it has become difficult for you to live as who you whom you are when the demand is that you should be someone else if you want to stay. The warning here is for people who are resilient because resilient people can stay in abusive situations or just situations like these much longer because they keep increasing how much they can take. And the danger is that they stop actively noticing when it's gotten too much and they overstay hurting themselves and others. If you are having harmful thoughts, please leave right away. Don't try to understand it. Do not try to fix it. The third part is that the first essential action step is that if you've asked this question, when should I leave? It's an important moment in your relationship with yourself. It has really become imperative for you to start tuning into what you are saying. If you're staying even one more day in this relationship, then start developing the habit of witnessing yourself, of noticing what you're feeling, what you're saying, how, what state you're in. Check in with yourself. Don't become that person who just keeps taking more and more and just keeps increasing their level. If you're watching yourself, there is someone who's protecting you. You. You are, you, uh, you have, okay. So a, a very essential technique is that you imagine yourself branching off into two distinct parts, becoming aware of one part of you that is going through the emotions, but then there's another part, the one that is witnessing the part that is going through the emotions. All of us are capable of this powerful technique to witness ourselves. It's just a matter of becoming aware of it and this will be your biggest guide and your biggest savior. Biggest guide in answering the question for yourself that should I leave my relationship or not, but also the biggest savior that you won't go, um, you won't hurt yourself. You, wouldn't, you will know when to stop. Promise you the answer will definitely come. If you start witnessing yourself, if you start becoming real with yourself, if you start to not just choose. I'm not going to betray myself. I'm not going to ignore myself. I'm not. I'm going to listen to what I'm saying. Um, you just have to stay tuned in enough and listen. The fourth um, is, and this is the second uh, important action step, is that everyone who wants to leave has an idea, a daydream of what they'll do when they leave. Make a list of all the things you'd want to do if you weren't in this relationship. The list can't include things like, I'd like to sleep with other people. If you plan to do that, if you plan to do that in secrecy, as in tricking others, 
Um, if you trick others, the problem with that is that you become in a deficit with yourself because first you're tricking yourself and it messes up with your integrity. You need integrity to have courage and strength to be there for yourself. If you agreed to be in a monogamous relationship when you're together, it would not be a good idea to do any of that. But barring that, make that list um, and, um, you know, and stop making excuses and start doing everything on your list one by one. Um, if there's a part of you that doesn't want to do what you always dreamed of doing, because that would mean your partner will do what they want to do and you're not okay with that, then you need to know that you are in a dependent or a likely codependent relationship. And that comes um, from plain upset. It comes from, um, it comes from pain and it comes from upset. Um, and um, taking these last two steps that I men mentioned, witnessing and, um, and uh, you know, making a list um, and many others that involve challenging and updating many beliefs is essential to start healing the dependency and can be healed. I hope this helps. So much love to you. Goodbye.